I'm off to Falkirk today. Um, I'll wait until this I get to the platform. And yes, we're off to Falkirk today. Um, I'm taking you along, but I'll wait till I get the to the station. station is Please familiarize yourself with the safety poster on display in each of the carriages. If you have bags, put them in one of the dedicated luggage areas or put lighter items in the rack above your seat. If you see any unattended luggage, please tell a member of staff. Thanks for traveling ScotRail, the fast and environmentally friendly way to travel. I'm off to Falkirk today. I'll wait until I'm on the platform, then I'll tell you what I've got in store for you. Well, I made it to Falkirk. It's only 20 minutes from Glasgow, 30 minutes from Edinburgh, so it makes an easy day trip. So, Falkirk. If you're from Scotland, you've probably heard of Falkirk. You've probably been to Falkirk, and you've probably seen some of the attractions I'm about to show you. If you're from the United Kingdom, you may have heard of Falkirk, especially on a Saturday afternoon when they have the football scores. Falkirk nil. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Now, if you're from outside of the UK, you may not have heard of Falkirk, but either way, everyone's in for a treat. I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the attractions of this town, and I'm taking you along as well. So, all I need to do is find my way out of the station and down to the canal. And it's that way. Well, today's probably the coldest day of the winter so far. I think it's about zero, minus one, maybe even minus two. Uh, they say there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes. So I'm dressed in layers, and I've got so many layers on, I feel as if I'm the Michelin man. Anyway, here we are. We've made it to the Union Canal and it is actually frozen over. The Union Canal was opened in 1822 and closed in 1933. It was opened in 1822 but within 20 years of it opening, uh, popularity actually started to uh, drop because of a thing called the railways and eventually that took all of the business away from the canals. But just behind you there is something which I wanted to see and I've wanted to see this for a couple of years. I know it's a bit sad, but I'll try and explain this to you. Well, that's the Falkirk Tunnel, 630 meters long or 2,067 feet. Now, I do have a thing about tunnels and I've wanted to see this for some time and I'll explain why.
for years I've had this interest in tunnels and I don't know what it is. I mean, they're usually dark, damp, wet sort of places. But uh, I did some research and I found a good excuse as to why you should explore tunnels. And I've written it down here. You're immune to the weather, they are quiet, and there's no risk of a car falling on your head. Now that makes sense to me. So let's go exploring down the tunnel a little bit and I'll find out where all this water is pouring in from. I thought being in a tunnel it would have been warmer in here, but it's absolutely freezing. So let's go outside and explore some more of the Union Canal. That water, by the way, does worry me. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the street above. Hmm. A lot of drips as well. Okay, we're back outside. Thank you very much for putting up with my tunnel affilia. Uh, I've wanted to see that tunnel for years, so I'm glad I actually finally got to see it. Right, we're going to head down this way towards uh, the Union Canal. We're going to follow it for a couple of miles and then there's something pretty cool I want to show you. You will be impressed. I was about to tell you, you can actually do cruises on those uh, barges. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. It's actually a beautiful morning here. Lots of people walking dogs, walking children and riding bikes. Just under a mile to go, and we should be hitting some locks. This is the Jubilee Lock, and it looks as if it's locked up for the season. Uh, I don't think anything's been through here for a little while. Let's have a look, see what there is. Ah, yes. And we've got another tunnel now, the Rough Castle Tunnel, 180 metres or 590 feet. It's a pretty modern one, but it's worth checking out all the same. This one's a lot drier and actually a lot warmer than the old one. Echo. Wow, it echoes really well. That is the Falkirk wheel, but uh, I need to see one thing first, and it's up this little path.
before I show you the Falkirk wheel, I want to show you something that was built in 142 AD by the Romans. And it's just over there. Well, this is part of the Antonine Wall. The wall itself was built of soil and turf and it was there. They built a ditch and the soil from this ditch was then put and built uh, a second defence here. Uh, it was uh, 63 kilometres or 39 miles long and it took them around about 12 years to build this. This was the northwest frontier of the uh, Roman Empire and they had so many problems with uh, the wild savage Caledonians here in Scotland they decided eventually to abandon this and build a second wall further south and that's called Adrian's Wall and that's the one that most people in Britain know about but uh, this was as far as the Romans got in Scotland. Okay, the Falkirk wheel, there. Well, that's the Falkirk wheel. It was opened in 2002 as part of a Millennium project and the wheel at the end there raises or in fact lowers uh, boats 24 meters or 79 feet and it's the only rotating boat lift of its kind in the world. Let's go and have a closer look. Okay, down to the Forth and Clyde Canal now, and I'll follow that for a couple of miles, and I've got something pretty cool In to show you as well. To fight off the frostbite, a quick cuppa. Oh yeah. More barges for rent. This is the Forth and Clyde Canal. It links the Forth, which is on the east side of Scotland where Edinburgh is, and the River Clyde on the west coast where Glasgow is, and it was the main way of getting goods and services between the two coasts without having to skirt all the way around Scotland, which could be pretty stormy in winter. This up ahead now is lock 16 on the canal, through to lock number 11. I'm pretty sure that's not a Banksy. Nearly there. And we've made it and it's right behind you.
Well, these are the Kelpies, and I've written down some factoids for you, so here we go. Uh, they stand 30 metres tall. They're the world's largest horse sculptures, and they were opened in 2013. And in case you are wondering what a Kelpie is, a Kelpie is a water spirit of Scottish folklore, typically taking the form of a horse and reputed to delight in the drowning of travellers. And it's right next to the canal. So there you go. A Kelpie is also a dog in Australia, but there's no connection. So let's have a little uh, closer look at these uh, beautiful statues. Have you ever in your life seen anything this amazing? Well, I could have spent ages at the Kelpies. I found them absolutely fascinating, but unfortunately I have a train to catch. Um, a couple of things though. The web address at the bottom of the screen right now, please pay a visit, planestrainseverything.com. I've been in the travel industry for 38 years, and 38 years, 38 years. And in that time I've picked up a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom, and also a lot of nonsense. And you'll find it all on one easy to understand website. Uh, please, if you like this video, please uh, click the like button. If you didn't like it, click it twice. And if you really didn't like it, click it three times, you know what I'm saying? Uh, don't forget to subscribe as well. Now, I don't actually bombard you with videos every week. I believe in quality over quantity. And you're probably wondering, where was the quality in this video? Ha ha. But yes, uh, on the horizon, I've got a four day vlog in Berlin. I've got a possible trip to Faro in Portugal, a uh, trip to Dubai, we've got China, and we've got Vietnam. So a pretty quiet period coming up. But if you subscribe, you won't miss out on any of these uh, trips. So anyway, thank you for joining me on this trip. I uh, appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. I just spotted a railway tunnel.